Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Legend 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to open up a double door, or just any kind of door, using timelines, which means that you can just reuse the same blueprint over and over again, instead of having to recreate a level sequence or a matinee or anything like that for each individual door. So this means you can just place in the blueprint and use it as many times as you like. So I'll give you an example of what we're going to make, and then we'll get right into it. So what we're going to be doing is just having doors like this, you go up to it, you press E, and it opens like so and then you press it again and it can close. And like I say, you can use this as many times as you like with the same blueprint without messing it up or breaking it or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So our first step is going to be to create the blueprint actor that we want. So how we're going to do this is right click, go to blueprint class, choose actor, and we're going to call this door underscore BP or anything like that. And then just open it up straight away. And then we're going to add in our static meshes up here. So go to add component up on the top left, get a static mesh. And here you put in the static mesh that you have for your door, obviously. So I'm just going to be using the door in the start content like this. So static mesh door like that. And then I'm going to get another one of these. So I'm just going to duplicate that and just move it over here. Rename these. So this one is going to be left door, this one right door. And then obviously I'm going to need to rotate this as well. So then I'll rotate this like that. So the door handle is in the middle and again, move this over. And then what we're also going to do so we can use it later is add in a box collision. And this is where you need to be to be able to open the door. So I'm just going to put this in the middle and scale it up to the size I want it to be. So like I say, if you're in this area, that's where you can then open the door. So make this as large as you want. So I'm just going to have it like that. And then straight away, I'm going to go over to the event graph. I'm just going to delete these like so. And I'm going to just get a sequence like this. So we'll put the event in before. We'll get a sequence so we can fire off multiple lines of code at the same time. We'll drag off of then zero and just add a timeline. And this is what we're going to be using to animate the door opening. So what we'll do first is left door open. Do that one first. So just name it that. Make sure that this goes into play and just double click this to open it. And then up in the top left here, we're gonna add a new float track. So add that, name this left door open again. And the reason we're using a float track is so that we can use the obviously float values to get between close and open. So then up at the length up here, what you're gonna do is change this to how long you want the animation to be. So I think I want mine to last for three seconds. So I'm gonna put three in there. And then on the graph down here, what we're gonna do is simply right click, add keyframe to cut float. And like I said in previous ones, a keyframe basically is a frame where it's in a certain location. So you have a keyframe for closed, keyframe for opened, it will then transition between those two keyframes. So once you've still got that selected up where it says time and value, this is gonna be for closed. So we're gonna set the time to zero, so it's at the very start, and the value also to zero. So this is at the very start, and then we'll right click and add another keyframe, set this time to our end. So like I said, mine is three seconds, so I'll set time to three and my value to one. So again, this is at the end. And then if you want to get this graph fitting perfectly on your screen, just press these two buttons here to zoom to fit horizontal, zoom to fit vertical, and you can see this is our graph. So this is where the door will be closed, this is where we open and this line is simply just the transition going between it. So if we hit compile, go to the event graph, we can either do that again or we can just simply duplicate it and then rename it to right door open. If we open it again, you can see that, that is how we want it. So compile, go to the event graph and plug that one into the then one again straight into play. And then what we're going to do is get a reference to our doors. So we'll drag in a reference to our left door up here dragging a reference to our right door down here. And then what we're gonna do is just drag off of left door and set relative rotation and do the same with the right door. And the reason we're doing this is because to open the door, we are rotating it. So we want to be able to set the rotation to be able to actually open and close the doors. And so we'll plug the set relative rotation into the update of our timelines like so. And then to actually be able to get the positioning of the door at the current time, we're gonna be using lerps and this value here. So if we right click on the new rotation and split structure pin down here, we can see we can mess about with the X, Y and Z as we only want to be rotating it on the Z axes. So what we're going to do is come out of the left door open up here, this float return value, come out and get a lerp, which is just shortened down for a linear interpolar or interpolar, however you want to pronounce it. And it basically just means you have a starting value, which will be A, a ending value, which will be B, and the alpha value here, which wants to be left or open there. And that is just the positioning you are between those two values. So A will have as the open position, B will be the closed position, 
and the alpha is the position where we are in between that so that will be getting it from the timeline so like I say the LERP basically just determines which position the door is in so the return value for the LERP goes into the new rotation of the Z there so what I'm going to do is just move these out a little bit like that and we're going to create two new variables so hit plus this one will be left door open although that's the name for our timeline so we'll get left door open float like so or just anything like that it doesn't you don't need to name it this exact thing and as it's in the name we're going to give this the variable type of a float and then we're going to make another one of these so hit plus again left door close float like so and we'll hit compile so we can mess with these variables and for the left door close we're going to leave this at zero so zero degrees as obviously the close position will be at the same position it is in now. So we'll drag in close and put that on A value of the up there. And then open, I'm going to set this to 100. So obviously 90 degrees will be 90 degrees from the starting position, but 100 will be just over it, which is what I want. So I don't want it to just open at a perfect right angle. I'm going to want it to open just slightly in front of it as well. So obviously change these values for how much or how little you want the doors to open, but 100 degrees is what I want. So then plug the open one into the B there and again like say alpha left or there like so and then we're just going to do the exact same thing for the right door down here so you can copy and paste the LERP there plug that in but this time we're going to make another two variables instead of using the left door we'll do it for right door so then again obviously plug in right door open into the alpha of that there that's called left door for some reason that's because of this track because we just duplicated it so I'll just put this as right door the naming doesn't matter it's just so we know what it is like that so again make those two new variables this will be right door open float and right door close float compile and we'll change these again and we'll plug these straight in again so the right door open into a right door close into b and for the right door open what we want to set this value is to 180 degrees and the reason i've done that is because as you can see in here this is flipped around. So for the left, the X is this way, but on this one, the X is that way. So because it's flipped completely around in a 180, we need to do the same over here. So like I say, this one's zero, this one will need to be 180 as we've just flipped it. So that one's 180, and this one, instead of it being 100 to be just a little bit more open than 90, is gonna be 80. As again, it's reversed. So I'm gonna set this one to be 80 like so. If we hit compile, that's this part done. Although obviously we haven't plugged it in anywhere, so this at the moment isn't going to do anything. So what I'm going to do is comment this. So select this, comment to be doors open, and then I'm going to duplicate this. So select all, control C, control V, move it down here, and this is going to be to close the doors. So I'll rename this comment doors closed. And simply the only difference we're going to do is instead of going into play, it's going to go reverse from end like so. So it's as simple as that. Instead of playing, we're just reversing it. And then to be able to switch between these two and actually play it, we're going to need to use a flip-flop. So if I just move this over a little bit, right-click here and get a flip-flop, which simply just toggles between two different values, i.e. A and B. So we'll plug A into doors open, B into doors close, like so. And that's the sequences we're plugging it into. And then in front of this, we're going to put our interacting code in here. So this is how we want to be able to open and close a door. So to do this, I'm going to create an action mapping. So if we minimize this, go to edit, project settings, and go down all the way to input, open action mappings, hit the plus, and I'm going to call this interact, and I'm going to set this to E. Although you can call it wherever you want and set it wherever you want, but this is what I want to do it with. And the reason we're doing an action mapping is because then you can use this to set up key bindings so player can change it, or you can set up multiple keys to do the same thing and along multiple devices, so like consoles and stuff like that. So if we close this and go straight back into the blueprint up here, what we're gonna do is right click and get interact or whatever you've just called it, like so. Drag off of pressed and get a gate. And then what we're gonna do is select our box collision up here, right click, add event and then add on component begin overlap drag that all the way up here and we'll do the same thing but this time add event on component end overlap like so now the reason we're doing this is so when you press interact you'll go into the gate and then if the gate is open i.e you're in the box overlap then it will fire off this code if you're not in the overlap it will close meaning you can't go through this line of code so it's just how we interact with things in a certain radius so what we're going to do for these box collision overlaps is come out of other actor and cast to 
our character and mine is a third person character and this is basically what you want to be able to overlap the box collision so if you want it to be an AI which overlaps this cast to that AI and then obviously this is going to go into open we do the same here other actor cast to third person character this one then goes into closed on the gate like so and then this go off exit of the gate and plug that into the flip-flop like so I'm going to comment this part here and just call this interact like so and the reason I'm commenting it is just so we know what everything does but then to be able to actually use our interact key we need to enable the input in this blueprint so if we just go up here and get event begin play like so drag off of this and just simply enable input like this player controller obviously get player controller like so and then to make sure we can use this over multiple blueprints what we're going to do is come back down to our interact key down here and untoggle consume input because if consume input is on then that means this one will obviously consume it meaning no other blueprints are able to use it only this one can so if we hit compile it should be done I'll also comment this just enable input just to keep it all nice and organized like so so this part should now be done so we can save this minimize it and place it in our world to test it out I'll just put it in here like that and if we hit play nothing happens I'm hitting E nothing happens we go up to the door press E they open like so and we can leave it nothing happens press E when we go in them again and they close now you see if you press E and press it again that happens which obviously we don't want. I'm also just going to put this the other way so it opens the other way as that's just what I would prefer anyway. So to fix this what we're going to do is go back into our code we're going to create another variable called open question mark and this is going to be a boolean and this obviously is just going to determine in the code whether or not the door is open or not. So up at the doors open one code up here at the end of the set relative rotation come out drag out and get a delay plug that into both of them there like that set this to the length of your animation so mine is three seconds and off completed just set open there like that and set it to true so the doors are open and then we'll just copy this paste it down here do the exact same thing on the closed but obviously untick that instead to make it false like so and then what we're going to do over here just in front of these sequences is hold b and left click to get a branch plug the true into the sequence down here and plug the flip-flop into that branch there so we're using it and the condition of this is going to be open so plug that in there so if the doors are open then we can close it and then we'll do the same up here again obviously instead of it being true it'll be false so put false into the sequence there a into that branch so if the doors aren't open then we can open them like this and this just means that if we press e while it's already open we can't restart the animation so if we compile, save that again, minimize, hit play to test it, we go over here, hit E, they will open, but if we hit E again, they're not closing while we're trying to open it. We hit E, we can close it, simple as that. And like I say, because this is on a timeline instead of the level sequence, we can put this in as many times as we want and it will still work perfectly. So we go here, open that. We can go here, open that as well. So this means you don't need to recreate a level sequence each time. You can put this in, use the same door each and every time. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we wanted to do. We've set up our door so we can open and close it using timelines, meaning we don't have to recreate it each and every time. And it works perfectly fine. So we can press E when we're close enough to it, it opens. Press E again and it closes and it's again only in the box collision when we're near enough to it. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.